Hi, how are you today? In this video today, I want to talk to you about a simple and easy way to monitor your health. I'll give you some very intuitive tools that you can put into practice right away to monitor your blood sugar levels. Because we know that if you have too much sugar in your blood, there can be some very negative consequences for your health. Yes, we all know about diabetes and pre-diabetic syndrome, but you might be suffering from many other disorders and difficulties that lower the quality of your life simply because you don't control your blood sugar. So, let's go together and look at 10 signs to check if you have high blood sugar levels, and then, at the end of the video, we'll also discuss how to control and manage them in the best way. Having stable blood sugar levels is essential for health. Unfortunately, it seems to be the number one problem in the modern Western diet and in the Italian diet as well. It should be taught even to children, and that's why I invite you to give a thumbs up, subscribe to the channel, and share this video because many of the signs we'll talk about are now widespread among the population and sometimes go unnoticed. It's important that there is an adequate amount of sugar in the blood because sugar is the number one source of energy in cells. In fact, there are molecules that allow sugar to enter cells, particularly a hormone, insulin. When you eat, when you have a hearty meal, but sometimes even when you're stressed or have hormonal imbalances, blood sugar levels rise. Insulin is released, and it acts as an intermediary, like a keystone, to open the door and let sugar into the cells. In this way, sugar can be used as energy and keep you going throughout the day. However, when the cells lose their sensitivity to insulin, which means that the insulin no longer opens the door, no longer has a positive effect on the cells, this is called in technical terms, insulin resistance. If you want to learn more about it, there's a video you can find by clicking up here. In cases where you eat too much, there is too much sugar in the blood. In these two conditions, insulin resistance or excess sugar in the blood after a large meal, what happens is that your body can no longer get sugar into the cells, but instead turns it into fat. Fat that can lead to very negative consequences, from fatty liver to diabetes to visceral fat. But the worst part is that this fat produces cytokines that are the basis of systemic inflammation. That is inflammation that affects your entire body, leading to all these consequences we're discussing now. Number 10, a very common and distinctive sign that I'm sure you've experienced too is the need to urinate frequently. The reason is that all this sugar in the blood must somehow be expelled because otherwise it's harmful. In this way, your kidneys are put to the test and work exceptionally hard to get rid of the excess sugar. The consequence is indeed an overload on the kidneys and sometimes even a tendency to have more frequent inflammation or infections in the urinary tract. In the worst cases, in situations of confirmed diabetes, urine can even be sweet. Yes, you heard that right. It can be sugary. In fact, before the advent of modern medicine, doctors, to diagnose a diabetes problem, checked whether insects went to drink the urine you produced. But one thing that can happen to you is waking up frequently after a large meal, after dinner, just to go to the bathroom to pee. Number nine, which is closely related to the frequent urination sign, is having constant thirst because your body needs to get rid of all that sugar and you keep urinating frequently. Consequently, you'll also experience lower and lower levels of fluids, leading to dehydration. That's why you'll feel thirsty and you'll tend to drink more, which is very positive if you're drinking plenty of water to balance out this loss of fluids. However, don't make the mistake of drinking sugary beverages or even worse, alcoholic beverages. We've all experienced it after a night out with friends where you have one, two, or three beers or a few more alcoholic drinks. Notice that the more you drink, the thirstier you become. These are not hydrating drinks because alcohol behaves like sugar, and common drinks among young people are often very sugary themselves. They lead to more frequent urination, increased thirst, and put you at a high risk of dehydration, which is a very common problem today, especially among the elderly. Number eight, this is very important, especially for those who still work, is having difficulty concentrating. The reason is that high sugar levels release insulin, and insulin inhibits other hormones that normally activate our mind, like serotonin or dopamine, for example. You've surely experienced that if you have a heavy sugary meal for lunch, you end up feeling immense fatigue and drowsiness right after lunch. 
The reason is that your body has to worry about managing and eliminating that sugar is engaged in that. That's why it shuts down all extra activities. It diminishes your ability to focus on other things. Never, never schedule a meeting at two or three if you're used to overeating at lunch. Number seven, the sign to monitor is difficulty in digestion, a bloated abdomen, difficulty digesting after a meal, or frequent gas. These are all symptoms that you could have excessively high blood sugar levels. You'll be interested to know that what you eat has a direct impact on your gut flora, and this gut flora communicates directly with your brain. It's even called the second brain. When you nourish it properly with fiber from vegetables and fruits, it produces positive hormones, influences your mood, and even your daily energy. If instead, you give it only simple sugars, you put yourself at risk of suffering from depression, low energy, and all those symptoms of poor digestion, like a bloated belly, intestinal gas, or even difficulty in digesting after a meal. If you want to learn more about the reasons for a bloated belly, I invite you to watch my video by clicking here above. Number six, constant hunger, perhaps the biggest problem, especially for those looking to lose weight. Well, if your blood sugar levels are consistently high, there's this paradox where you keep eating, but you're always hungry. That's because this sugar, instead of going from the blood to the cells, stays in the blood and gets expelled through urine. You'll never get the energy where you need it, and you'll always be hungry. Your body will always demand more. The result is that you'll eat and eat and eat, transforming this sugar into fat, and you'll gain weight, depositing a lot of fat, especially in your belly and viscera, without ever losing weight, without ever having energy, without ever building muscle mass. In more advanced cases, just think, your body starts deriving energy from your muscles and bones, leading to this paradox that is often seen in diabetic individuals, where there's a very developed belly, a highly developed visceral fat, but very thin and frail legs and arms. Number five, and this is a problem that we often see in children too, is an excessive susceptibility to developing infections all over the body. From a girl or a woman who may suffer from recurrent candida and urinary tract infections, to someone who might have persistent foot fungus problems that won't go away. Bacteria, viruses, parasites, they feed on sugar and grow much more easily in an environment rich in this substance. That's why you could have recurrent skin problems that don't go away even with creams. That's why you struggle to get rid of foot fungus or your candida keeps reproducing frequently every month. Number four, skin problems, the skin, which is often considered the litmus test of your gut. What you eat directly influences what you expose externally, your skin. And often it's the first to suffer from a deficiency, a lack, or a hormonal imbalance. If you suffer from dandruff desquamation, if your heels are often cut, if you have redness, changes in skin color, or general itching, it could indeed be a sign of high blood sugar levels. And don't forget that high blood sugar leads to premature aging, and the first thing you'll notice is a deterioration in your skin. Number three, particularly common even after a certain age, is suffering from frequent muscle pains. This is because these muscle cells need energy, but it's not delivered from the blood because the sugar remains inside the blood vessels. You could suffer from weakness and pains related also to muscle, joint, and nerve problems. Even the nerves themselves can be damaged by excess blood sugar by well-established diabetes. Neuropathy is perhaps the most concerning secondary effect for someone with diabetes. Sugar interferes with the proper functioning of nerves, causing them to become inflamed and leading to pain that isn't necessarily physical, but is due to the inflammation of the nerves themselves. Number two, you'll see it on your face, your nose, and your mouth. On one hand, gum problems, frequently bleeding gums, what's called periodontitis, and in your respiratory passages, you might have excess mucus and excess of infections or colds. That's because sugar feeds external pathogenic bacteria and microorganisms. It's very easy to suffer from cavities, bleeding, and discomfort in the mouth. It's also very easy to develop excess mucus and constant infections, which are not necessarily due to winter or the cold. Your diet directly affects the health of your mouth, your nose, and that's why you need to control your levels if you want to stay healthy. And finally, at number one, it's the fat excess fat right where we don't want it in the intestines in the viscera excess visceral fat is the number one characteristic that indicates you probably have cardiovascular problems like a heart attack or a stroke 
or you'll have health problems like cancer or degenerative diseases. So, we absolutely need to reduce visceral fat. You must do it. And if you have excess, it's probably because you have high blood sugar levels. But now that you're clear on the signs your body is giving you to show you that things aren't going as well as you think, but are going wrong, what can you do right away to manage it better? I'll give you three simple recommendations. The first one is intermittent fasting. Go watch the video by clicking here above. It can help you control insulin and lower blood sugar levels. What does it mean? Increase the fasting time between dinner and breakfast. Maybe have breakfast at 9 instead of 7, then at 10, then at 11. Increase this space so that your body can lower the sugar, reset, and start from scratch. But be careful not to make the mistake of doing intermittent fasting and then having excessive sugar intake or following a wrong diet during lunch. This is counterproductive. The second thing to do is high-intensity exercise, weight training, exercise that is good for everyone, from 8-year-old children to 90-year-old ladies. I assure you there are no risks in lifting weights if done gradually and progressively, maybe under the guidance of a personal trainer or a competent physiotherapist. In this case, too, go watch the video. I made seven easy exercises that anyone can do with some weights progressively to start increasing your sensitivity, to make your cells more sensitive to sugar, because when you exercise, muscles grow and they attract nutrients, they attract sugar that is then removed from the bloodstream. And the third piece of advice from a dietary point of view is to modify your diet and greatly increase the amount of fiber. I've already talked about this in a dedicated video. Go watch it! But the number one deficiency in the Western diet is the lack of fiber. We need to start eating more fiber in fruits, vegetables, whole grains, legumes, in all plant-based foods where fiber is the essential part. Stop peeling potatoes and apples or continuing to refine foods. Eat them as they are because the fiber inside, even if it doesn't have much taste or maybe it's a bit bitter, is actually feeding your microbiota and it's very good for you. I have nothing left to do but to conclude by inviting you once again to give a thumbs up, subscribe to the channel, and share the video. Because guys, blood sugar management problems are now everyday issues. We all have them to some extent. So let's all learn together to control these aspects and we'll all have a healthier life. Goodbye and thank you.